الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى علي وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله one of the supplications of the Prophet وسلم, which shows us the importance of uh, supplicating and showing our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also asking him to protect us and preserve us because your health and your iman your time and your wealth are all so important for building you as a human being and for you in your path to paradise on your journey and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with Jannah to Firdos the Prophet sallallahu alayhi used to supplicate and we need to check on the order of these in which he said in one of the supplications that we need to know he said Allahumma a'fani fi bedani Allahumma a'fani fi basari Allahumma wa'afani fi sam'i la ilaha illa ant so the Prophet sallallahu he supplicated Allahumma a'fani fi bedani O Allah You know, protect me or preserve me in my body. You know, give me health, afia, salama. Wafi basari, and in my sight, wafi sami, and in my hearing, la ilaha illa ant. There is no. God worthy of worship except you and then in the second part of the supplication he supplicated for he said Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al kufr ومن الفقر ومن عذاب القبر لا إله إلا أنت. So in the second part of the supplication, he supplicated and he said, uh, I seek refuge. اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الكفر. You know, I, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from kufr, disbelief. Women of Fakr and from poverty. Women Women Adab al Qabr and from the punishment of the grave, La ilaha la ant. There is no God worthy of worship except you. SubhanAllah. Look at this hadith or look at this supplication of the Prophet and see how encompassing it is for our dunya wal akhirah. For our dunya, will akhirah. So, in the beginning of the supplication, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam supplicated for health, a healthy body, a healthy body. Habatifillah. That goes without saying. That's going to help you in ta'atillah. It's going to help you in your ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So can I help you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with good good health, with a good healthy mind, give you the strength to uh, rise to the occasion and worship Allah Azza wa Jal. Have the model. And also asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for health in with uh, then then the Prophet وسلم, in that supplication. It goes from the 
from min al amil khas from that which is general to that which is specific because health in your uh, in your your hearing in your sight is a part of a healthy body but here the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned that specifically showing us the importance of course of those faculties of hearing and sight and that we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we need to protect those things and ask Allah azza wa jal for protection with regards to our health and our sight our hearing and our our our, our, our sight and so that is from the general to the, the to the specific and that gives it a greater emphasis that in general we want to have a healthy body you know you want to have healthy limbs you want to be able to be healthy where you can pray without assistance you don't have to pray on crutches or pray uh sitting or something like this but you want to pray and and in ta'ala with your with your body intact and that making it easy to to uh pray your ibadah in the most perfect form in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and likewise as we talked about before that the you know we're one our body our mind our soul you know human beings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us as complete beings that we have these faculties and and that health the health in some is a part of the health for all the overall health you know when you're healthy uh physically you know this can help you in your phys- your mental and spiritual growth and when you're healthy in obviously the core is being spiritual being in your iman that this helps you otherwise and your hearing and sight as we hear the river is so important for us to recognize dangers to recognize and being and and also establish peace in our hearts and tranquility and the sight goes without saying the beauty that we witness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation in his signs alhamdulillah what a ni'mah min ni'amillah great 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 ni'mah from our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala look how clear the stream is and that's because you can see some people have never been blessed with that faculty but they have strength in other ways but what a ni'mah if we use this for khair and we appreciate what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us because if you were to lose your sight even for 24 hours just think of the panic you would go through of wondering is it permanent will i be able to see the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will i be able to see my spouse again will i be able to see my parents again will i see this will i see this i want to see the sunset i want to see the sunrise i want to see the mountains i want to see the trees i want to see the rocks i want to see the stream subhanallah what a ni'mah min ni'amillah in the other part of the supplication our prophet ali salatu wasalam sought refuge so in the first part he's asking you know and this is how, we're asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those favors you know to, for for the protection and the preservation of our our physical showing us that that's also important in islam Many people some people they ignore the physical. They don't take care of themselves physically. They don't protect and preserve themselves by eating good food, by being active with the the favor Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them, by even realizing the importance of the physical. The physical is so important and what a great nikmah to even recognize that. Even recognizing the physical is such a great nikmah from Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I advise you and myself to be strong, be physical. You know, take care of your body to the best of your ability, to the best of your ability. And in the second part of the supplication, 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He said he sought refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from the harms uh, from first and foremost from kufr from the darkness of disbelief Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kufr let's hope we can cross this river without falling in especially now that we're barefoot and without losing our camera Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kufr we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from kufr. Women of fakr. Subhanallah. So you're seeking refuge. Of course, this is one of the scariest things is to return back to disbelief. How many people have you known that have left Islam? For us as reverts, we've known so many, at least my generation, the particular place where I am. And I've heard countless stories. Uh, and of course, also people who are born Muslim. Lots of people like uh, in that situation. There's whole movements here in Seattle and other places. And I've heard in London, whole movements of Somalis and Pakistanis who have left Islam. So seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think you're immune. Allahu Akbar. Beautiful cold. And it's a little strong. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So, seeking refuge from kufr is, is, is so important. This supplication is so important. Full of tawheed. Asking your Lord. Seeking refuge in your Lord. Who you should only seek refuge in. You don't ask your mother to protect you from kufr. You don't uh, ask your, your father to protect you from disbelief and, and, and the... the the punishment of the grave? No. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's amazing how many people who claim that it's okay to go to your Sufi Sheikh or whoever. Who, <coughs> Subhanallah. Ah. <laughs> to go to your Sheikh and, and uh, seek refuge in them and ask them for these things or ask them for the sacred knowledge to come closer to Allah. Subhanallah. How does your Sheikh get... How is he favored as a wali to gain the sacred knowledge so you can make istighatha from him, but you couldn't make it from your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That he couldn't save you from those things except by offering you his sunnah. فَمَنْ رَغِمَ فَمَنْ رَغِبَ on sunnati فَلَيْسَ minni. Whoever desires other than my sunnah فَلَيْسَ minni. Then he's not from me. As the Prophet ﷺ said, it can be sunnati. It's upon you my sunnah. So he didn't say it's upon you to supplicate to me. It's upon you to make istighatha to me. To seek refuge and help from me after I've died. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La. We don't have evidence for this kind of things. This is not from Islam. That is more in... in it's more in common with uh, Catholicism. Wallahu musta'an. So, we see that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to seek refuge from the hellfire by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, seek refuge from uh, kufr, from disbelief. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-kufr. I seek refuge in from kufr. Women al fakr And the second thing he mentioned, subhanAllah, which is so relevant for our discussion, is he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned fakr. As we, we talked about this prior. Uh, he mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from poverty. SubhanAllah, under. Look at this. 
Because poverty, when you're poor, and I believe there's an ather, uh, an ather on one of, uh, I believe it might be Umar ibn al-Khattab or Ali ibn Abi Talib, I, I can't recall who, about that, uh, that uh, uh, poverty, a faqr, barid al or something similar to this, that poverty is a means to disbelief. Think about this. Because a lot of people say, no, nah, no, you, you, you just you have weaky man, you have this. Let me give you real scenarios. All over Africa and Asia in many poor countries, uh, especially though it, this has been the case in, in many parts of Africa, and likewise probably some of the parts of Asia, where the Christian missionaries, they come, they have wealth, they have food, and they offer colleges. How many as a part of colonial strategy, how many communities they sent their children away to become Christianized, you know, from Muslims, ignorant Muslims that were poor, and they just wanted a better opportunity for their children, so they sent them away to those places, and they came back. And I, subhanAllah, one of the first times I went to Ethiopia, I met someone. His name was Suleiman. And I said, MashaAllah, Suleiman, you know, when he was talking to me, he spoke English. I was happy because I was going to a place I couldn't speak the language. No one could really speak English. I just got on the bus. My friend showed me how to get my bus ticket and I was going. I was going to Wolo, to Desi. And on my way, I met someone who was from Wolo and he, told, he showed me how to get some really good honey from there. Anyhow, his situation was, he said, SubhanAllah, yeah, because I think it might have been Ramadan or somewhere around this time, because it was, I remember the, the message there. But anyway, he, he said that my grandfather's Muslim. Either my grandfather or my father. Yeah, my grandfather's Muslim. I said, SubhanAllah, really? I was like, wow. I said, what's going on? He said, yeah, my father either was Muslim or they were sent as children, you know, to the missionary schools or, you know, whatever. And we became Christian. Okay. And, and you know, and I was born Christian or something similar to this. But anyway, this is a very common uh, scenario, a common tale that you find uh, in many of the places and you see that's just one way in which poverty can lead to uh, disbelief and you know giving up your children uh, to be educated or have a better opportunity or people woe you over ignorant whole ignorant tribes were woed over through wealth and and food So seeking refuge from fakr because fakr it, it puts a stress on you and it can put a stress on your iman. Now there are those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is favored. They are better in iman and they are more resilient when it comes to poverty. But some of us, if we lose just a little bit of our status, we freak out, we go crazy, we do many sins, we panic, we get riba, we do this, we look for escapes. So it depends on the person's level of iman and their level of uh, resilience in being able to hold up when things get tough. And then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned the punishment of the grave. So in this hadith, in this in this supplication, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned those specific things. It shows us also the uh, the seriousness of the the punishment of the grave, that it, it's something that we need to be fearful of, that we need to clean ourselves up as far as uh, being away from those sins that will be a cause for being punished in the grave, like for example, Ghiba or Namima, you know, uh, spreading wicked tales around the community uh, about people, because it's so easy to backbite. That's so easy to do. And we know that the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that as one of the things uh, about people being punished, because he was walking Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by some graves, and they were uh, gr Jews that were in the graves, you know, that were inhabitants of the grave, meaning they, they had deceased and they were Jews from an, another umam, I believe. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, as a hadith is goes, مُرَّ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَىٰ كَبَرَيْنِ فَقَالْ إِنَّهُمَ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was walking by some graves, and he said, إِنَّهُمَ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ He said, verily, they're being punished in the graves. And they're being punished for some something that the people don't really take, that the people take lightly. They don't think it's a big deal. And then he said, he said, the first one, they didn't make a stinja properly. The second one, 
or you know they didn't wash their private parts they they didn't clean themselves from urine protect themselves from urine and this has a couple of implications and we've talked about it in our drus of tara and the second point he said and as for the second one he used to uh uh he used to you know spread namima so it shows us that that is one of the that's a major sin and it's one of the causes for punishments of the grave we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us protect us preserve us preserve us in our bodies in our iman and in and and doing those things which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to do and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and protect us from the uh the from from kufr wa faqr wa adhab al-qabr وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد